ahead on NFL Game Pass Film Session. All right, now you'll be coming. Ahead on NFL Game Pass Film Session. All right, now you'll be coming with the fight. And Jay, you're going here. The ends don't need to know. You need to know, right, Jay? Brian Baldinger and Ron Jaworski sit down with Coach Steve Spagnolo. All zone coverages work better with a pass rush. Yeah. <laughs> just, just in case you guys yeah, didn't know that. The mastermind behind the Giants' 2007 Super Bowl winning defense. Brady changes the protection, okay? And we're going to be ready to change the play. Coach Spagnola has him dialed in right now. Listen, man, we're seven strong now. Backed with over 30 years of coaching experience, Coach Spags talks about pass defense. And we preach route reading and tell the defenders, get your eyes on the routes first and get to the quarterback late. Then breaks down how to properly play three types of zone coverage. Attack mode, man, attack mode, attack mode. The flat area is out near the sideline, but it's anywhere from the line of scrimmage all the way up to 15 yards deep. Baldy, time for another game pass film session. We're going to drill down on the defensive side, and uh, we're very fortunate to have with us uh, Steve Spagnolo, yep. Super Bowl champion, head coach of the Rams. Let's go 9-6, let's go. All right, George, come on. Come on, Coach, come on, come on, come on, big man. One of the brightest minds on the defensive side of the football You're in the National kind, Football Josh. League. Hey, I'm just a nice guy. You know? <laughs> You're being too kind. And beside that, coaching over in Barcelona. You're over Loved in the it. NFL Loved Europe. It. We are very, very thankful to have you joining us. And now you're going to teach us a little defense today, aren't you? Before we do that, you know who was breaking into broadcasting when I was in Barcelona and Frankfurt? <laughs> this guy <laughs> to my left right here, right? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, that, you're talking about a fun league now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's sad that it's not in existence now. But fun defense. You know, Steve, there's, there's just so much. There's a lot of information out there. Sometimes it's not always accurate. Yeah. But, like, I just think people want to know when a quarterback throws a touchdown pass, who got beat? Why, why wasn't that <laughs> covered? What we want to try to get into a little bit today is the responsibilities within these zones. Particular Responsibility, like how you teach it, install it, the different areas of the zone. Yeah. Maybe we could get inside some of that. When you whittle it down to basics, there's really two types of coverage. Okay. Zone and man. All right. right. Simple, right? Yeah. Pop one a football. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's break it down from there. We'll get to the man later, but okay. if we're talking zone coverage, there's two types of zone coverage. Okay. Uh, you can spot drop into a zone, look at the quarterback, and, and play react. your zone and react. Yeah. Or, and what, what's more in this league nowadays, because it's getting so intricate, is zone coverage by pattern reading. Yeah. yeah. Reading routes, twos out, ones in, and there's a lot more of those zone concepts in NFL football today. So Here's what I want to do. Paul Penn Reed and Aaron, as you're, you've got to see where three goes. You know, if we're in one of your defensive meeting rooms here, Steve, like, let's just start with the basics of coverage. The only way I'm going to do it properly, Bald, is if I go up there, because you know I'm a visual guy. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to draw we something, or else well, well, it's not going to work out. Right? So let's go. let's do go. that. All right. All right, so listen, let's, let's do this coverage-wise. So just simple math now. Yeah. Okay, let's just do some simple math. All right, so there's the football field. It's okay. 53 and a third uh, yards, yards wide, wide, right? And we know it's 100 yards long. If we could take nine coverage guys and put them back there in coverage, we could take away the deep quarters of the field. That would only be, uh, Baldy, you did the math, right? Yeah, 13, 13 yeah, yards. Yeah, about 13 yards of field. You could stand in the middle of 13 yards, yeah. and if the ball's got to travel 30 yards downfield, Juz, we can cover that, yeah, right? Got, yep. That would take care of all the deep throws. If you could take five guys and put them in these underneath one-fifth area yeah. that we call two flats and two curls and two hooks, yeah. we'd be okay. Problem is, we'd only have two guys to rush. I like that as a quarterback. Yeah, you, yeah, you'd have no problem with that. I like that part. Okay, so what happens? Uh, we, let's say we want to rush three people. We got to okay. take one guy out of here. All right, now this deep area has to get split into thirds. All right, okay. it becomes a little more challenging yep. for you back here, Baldy, right? No sure. one, we can do the math. We don't need to now, but instead of covering 13 yards of field, it's one third of the 53 yeah. and a third. Yeah. Right, but we only have three guys rushing. Right. 
All right, most teams, right? Most zone coverages have four men, four men in the rest. Right. So right. now one. we've got to cover somehow with seven guys. And conceptually, there's really two of them. You can play three deep, four under zone. Yep. Or we play two deep, five under. All right, what are the reasons for the two different ones? I mean, you could stick in one and try to master it, but it's not too long before you figure out that underneath, if you've got to cover five zones and you only have four bodies to do it, it gets a little bit tough. Jay, play it, play it, play it, play it. So what typically happens in a game is defensive coaches change up if they're gonna stay in zone between two deep and three deep. Mm -hmm. You got teams at second and five and it's gonna be a short throw. Maybe you live in this world a little bit because you got five underneath people, sure. right? If we want to take care of uh, them throwing things deep. We don't want a deep ball in the middle post. We get in a three deep and stick somebody here. Every coverage has a weakness. Every coverage has a strength. When we talk to our defensive players about how you see that formation, yes. we talk first about that's a two by two formation. Two receivers here, two on that side, or a three by one. If I put trips on one side, one, two, three receivers, and then one that side, that'd be a three by one. If we want to talk to these zone defenders on this side about how we're going to pattern match or defend any route concepts to that side, we're going to number receivers from outside in. in. I would say that's number one strong, that's number two strong, that's number three strong. If I get on the weak side, number one weak, yep. number two weak. Now here's where it gets tricky. I'll say to the players, he's number one strong by alignment. In other words, when they come out and get lined up, you know, if that's Odell Beckham, he's number one by alignment. The tight end is number two by alignment. Yeah. So when we start talking about route concepts and pattern reading, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say that somebody reads two to one if two now goes and becomes one, he now has to defend the new number two. So though, that's the language. Yep. Coach, you know, the, the minute you get your team together, you were telling us one of the first coverages you install is, is cover three. So obviously you like that coverage. What are the benefits of it and what are the challenges of cover three? Yeah, good question. I mean, you're going to see what we call mixed downs, first and second down run or pass, mm -hmm. right? And mixed downs is, I think, where you're gonna find more of your cover three for a lot of reasons. A, it's probably one of your better run defenses. Mm -hmm. You're getting another guy out of the secondary the that can help in. Yep. You gotta know the strength of your defense that you're coaching. And if you're strong on the outside as in, in the corner department, and you can put a little bit more pressure on them because they can cover those wide mm -hmm. outs and take them out of the game, I think cover three is a good coverage. Where are the weaknesses in that, okay? The weaknesses to me are out here in the flat, mm -hmm. okay, because you're gonna have a curl, we, we'll talk in terms of somebody playing the curl flat or playing the hook curl. Mm -hmm. And all that means is that if I'm, if I'm a defender and I have the hook curl, I've gotta work through the hook and then out to the curl based on the routes. If I'm a curl flat defender, I work through the curl and then to the flat. Well, if I'm telling these two guys to work through the curl mm -hmm. and then get to the flat, that must mean that that flat's open yeah. early, right? So to me, the weakness in cover three is out here the on the speed flat. outs. You want to be a good cover three team, you need good corners. I, mean, I it think goes so. goes without saying. Look, if you play off all the time and, and these people are getting five out, all of the time. It's going to be really hard for those four guys to cover those five zones. Sure. They just kind of yeah. trickle on down the field. So your corners at some point have got to be up there and make Challenge. plays for you. Yeah. Richard shoots it. Smith picks it up. Fires the middle and it is intercepted. What a pick by Josh Norman. You know, you tell these quarterbacks now exactly what they're getting. Yeah. And they know no, they, exactly what they're getting. You know what route they'll like. Yeah, you make it easy yeah. on them, right? Yeah. Make it yeah. easy on them. Three. First play is three. First play is AMC. Second play, hold on, hold on. Second play is three. I mean, I'm lining up things and showing the quarterback that it's cover three. What we've always liked to do is not show you. And then the three deep is either going this way 
or maybe he's coming down and it's... But to me, in today's day and age football, I think you really need to do that to mm -hmm. quarterbacks. I think it's cover three. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's hard to tell. But yeah, they're not shifted over for man, so. We just had a nice chalk talk session on the Love grease it. board there. No chalk anymore. No, no chalk right? anymore. I used to have to wash <laughs> off all the chalk on my hands. No, and now it's, yeah. But let's go to the let's go to uh, the real film session with your Giants here. When we look at this coverage right here, it looks like a cover two shell. Yeah, and that's what we talked about earlier. Yeah. I mean, you don't want the quarterback to know pre-step. You'd like him not to know what he's going to see. If we line up in that three deep four under we talked about, he knows where the weaknesses are, and he's going get, to get the ball there. Yeah, it ends up a weak side rotated three deep. You can see Landon down yeah, here, right 21. Here. Yeah. He's going to end up becoming our hook curl player. Right here. DRC, who's up in the line, he's right going to be our curl flat curl player. Flat, right here. Right? Up top, you have a linebacker and a nickel that are going to be playing hook curl and curl flat. Yep. And your 3D players are going to be each corner. Yep. And there's your free safety who's going to go to the middle of the field. Yep. So let's see if we did this okay. well or not. Eagles have a third and 11. Falls back. Zips one right incomplete. That's what it should look like. This is well done all the way around, really. Okay. All right, Spags, we just kind of went through a pretty good overview of cover three. Yeah. But we know there's more than cover three. We thought maybe we'd get to, you know, some two deep coverage, quarter coverage, what it is and why you use it and when you use it. Hey, remember the four verticals, right? Remember the four verticals down in this area, right, Kenny? Four verticals. Once they start going vertical on those cover three, the, the going to quarters can one way to take away yeah. the, the deep vertical. That, that would be an immediate thing to go to if you were leery of deep shots, four verticals. Yeah. I mean, quarters, I think, helps you. But now, in, in theory, if you put four guys back deep, put them in deep zones, you are now defending the run with, quote unquote, seven, seven. defenders. Yeah. So I think you strengthen yourself on deeper passes, back but you weaken yourself a little bit in the run game and a little bit in the underneath routes. We talked earlier about 3D, and one of the ways to attack 3D is to go four vertical, right. two by two, and you're stretching these three deep defenders in four areas. To take that away, you shift coverages a little bit, and now we've got four guys deep these two guys are protecting the hashes, and these two guys are protecting the numbers. But we weaken somewhere. Right. So no longer do we have four underneath defenders, we only have three. So the stress goes on what I call the two quarters flat defenders. Okay. And the Mike linebacker. Let's talk about different types of quarter coverage, okay? okay? There's real aggressive flat foot quarter coverage, and there's a softer cover four where you're taking away the deep route. All right. Make sure you stay close enough inside that he can't hit that seam, right? The other thing that's interesting about quarters, conceptually, you have to make a decision. In quarters coverage, you want, to, you want to play your corners outside or inside. Yeah. You play them outside, it'll help you on those deep out routes. Right. But some teams will play it inside and say that we're better at corner than you yeah. are at wide out, and it helps all of the inside. If they want to throw an out route all day, our corners are good enough to drive right. on it. Here's the question I have, Steve. So you have three underneath. They've got to be more. They've got to be more clued into the pattern. The routes. To yeah. the routes. Yeah. But like, here's a young player, Miles Jack, and I'm yeah. picking on him here. I'm just saying, how do you learn Makes a to know there, what's well? I'm see, B Baldy's not even a defensive coach, Jaws, and he already blame found. It, blame he found someone? the yeah. mistake. <laughs> no, but it's good football. But you found the mistake. Okay, so here's the so here's the mistake, and it's a big play. It's third and eighteen yeah. right here, but. The question I'd have, and what you, what you would tell this young player, yeah. how do you learn to know what's going on behind yeah. you? Yeah, so if you go back to the beginning, and we're back to our numbers, right? If you can count to three, you can play football. One, two, three, right? He's got to read three to two. As long as number three, when the, when the routes develop, as long as he stays as number three, then he should be over the top of, or underneath the final three. When he becomes number two, his eyes and body should go now to the guy that's gonna become uh, three. three. This Mike linebacker needs to be on the final 
three. Wow, final three, I got you. And what he did was he does what a lot of young guys do, they stare at the quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. And they don't realize what's going on behind them. But what he should be doing is opening, opening up and up. finding the new number three, and then I think he got a better down. Yeah. Coach, we've uh, broken down cover three, cover four. Uh, now I see one of the more predominant coverages, cover two. From a quarterback perspective, I think it's one of the toughest coverages because you can play the five underneath. You can play zone. You can play man. Uh, and, and when would you use cover two, and what are the benefits and challenges of cover two? These teams that have these quick timing pass games, where the routes are underneath, mm -hmm. you know, and there's interchange of concepts, getting five guys underneath to take that away just by math right. helps you out a little bit. Yeah. You go to too deep now, you've weakened yourself a little bit in the run, run game. game. Yeah. You put a little bit more pressure on two half defenders yeah, and right. now three guys back down back there. Now there's just two yeah. of them. But you certainly have shored up all the underneath quick throws, pick routes, and that's what it's really good for. So we're talking about two deep, five under, yeah, right? Simple deep. math is your two deep defenders, yeah. right? Theoretically, your two corners are in the flat, your Mike linebacker's in the middle hook, and there's your two curl defenders. In theory, it should take away a little bit more of the short passing game. Mm -hmm. Now, you weaken yourself in the deep routes, but it should be a little bit better underneath. But if it's strong side, right, keep that too high look. Listen, there's a lot of versions cover two. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with little intricacies and changes, there are firmer cover twos. The corners stay in the flat no matter what. There's what I call floated cover twos, where the corners could get pulled out of the flat based on particular routes that they get. Do you like to redirect? Yeah, I, I, all of them would believe in redirecting. Okay. Oh, you corners, theoretically, want to force their number one receiver inside yeah. because you've got yeah. only two deep defenders now, each covering a half of the field. So, so you want to shrink that shrink part it. of it. And yeah. if listen, it, the, the coverage never works very good if you don't do that. What did you do on that last one? Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, took it away. Yeah. 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 Now, I wanted, one of the main things about cover two I think that gets lost with people is that when we put the two corners in the flat, mm -hmm. the flat area is out near the sideline, right? It's numbers to yeah. sideline as we drew it up earlier. But it's anywhere from the line of scrimmage all the way up to 15 yards deep. So if this corner has to take care of that area, he needs to get a little bit of depth to take care of that 15, 18 yard area. Sometimes we think that he's supposed to just sit yeah, there at five. Right, right, That's right. not the case. The flat area is from the line of scrimmage to 15 yard deep okay. because we've only got two guys yep. back there deep. Let's see what uh, 24 ends up doing. He probably needs to get a little bit more depth. In cover two, the corners technique in play is vital. 24 was almost in really good shape here. What got him in trouble was, ever so slightly, he bit on the flat route. Right here. Yeah. yeah. And that's going to get you in trouble. Yeah. Definitely a no cover zone. And he shouldn't jump a route underneath five when you've right. got the threat of an 18, 20 out. And it's third, it's third and 11. It's third and 11. That's the yeah. 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 situation. Yeah. In any of these zone covers, if you can freeze it there, ball, yep. we always talk about a no cover zone. Mm -hmm. And third and nine, all right, that five yard area underneath there, yep. from the line of scrimmage to five yards downfield is what we call no cover zone. In other words, quarterback, if you want to throw it, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Because we're good enough to we're stick our foot in the ground, go rally and get this. Good discipline by Buffalo's underneath coverage not to jump a route, because the minute he jumps that route, the route behind him is going to be oh, wide open, and then he got a first down. I thought it was a really good job of situational football, third and nine, knowing what they could give up, and then making the tackle there off the field. Let me just uh, go one, one step further here, just on the tackle here. When he comes up, he goes for that outside leg full yeah. speed. You know what we call that? He's an arrow through snow. Arrow through snow. There Visualize an arrow yeah, through, through snow. snow. Okay. In other words, don't yeah. stop and right break down, down here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Go. Keep him on your inside pad, which that corner did. Yeah. Be a good leverage on the football. Keep it on my inside pad if I'm an outside defender. Yeah. And be an arrow through snow. I'm a firm believer in that. You want to pay homage to a 
great defensive football coach, Jim Johnson, and yeah, I know you guys both got to know very him. Very well. Jim used to preach that all the time. Don't break down and tackle. When we played Pop Warner football, all of us, right? When the coaches said, break down, what do we do? Break down. <laughs> break down. Now, you can't tackle anybody like that. <laughs> right. Right? You got to keep your feet underneath you. We now talk in terms of shorten your stride and sink your tail. Okay. And that's what this football yeah. player is doing right yeah. here and doing yeah. a really good job. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Ball, the game's I'm, fast. Ball, I'm taking copious notes here. So just you're aware of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's days like this that yeah. you're in this business, right? Do two things for me today. Play cool in the head and hot in the heart. Cool in the head, hot in the heart. Don't want him to get a field goal now. I got a good mind to pressure this thing, guys. It's easy to sit here and say, well, why didn't we do that? But pass games, as intricate as they are, all the pick routes yeah. that we get, jamming receivers and disrupting timing to me is the number one thing I think we should always look to do. That's why we love the clicker. We're always right. Yeah. Always right. <laughs> Go back and forth, right? Got time to see it over and over. That's right. You got the regular picture? Where's my, where's my, where's my picture guy? I don't see any flashball going on. 